There's a good chance that the Antichrist is walking and breathing on this planet as we speak, which that means that the false prophet that comes along with the Antichrist is alive. So why do I think it's Elon Musk? Well, there's two pieces of evidence that are more significant, uh, that are more significant than any other piece of evidence. One, it says in Revelation, the false prophet will deceive with fire from the sky. And so Elon Musk has this face, fake space program called SpaceX. And let me tell you, he ain't been past the firmament. No man has ever been past the firmament. He has not been in space. He has not put a rocket on Mars. He's not done anything he said he, he did. He's not a scientist. He's not a propulsion engineer. He don't make electric cars. He pays people to do it for him. He's, he's one of the greatest scammers that humanity's ever seen. But I think he's actually a step further than just a con artist. I think he's evil embodied. And I can say that with confidence because... Like I said, one piece of scripture, the false prophet will deceive with fire from the sky. But here's another piece of evidence is Elon Musk is inventing chips that go in people's brains. And I'm telling you, that is the behavior to look for when you're that talking about your brain and you watch. And I'll tell you right now, he is he is evil embodied. Nobody wants to put a chip in somebody else's brain unless if they are evil and sadistic. And I'll say it right to his face. I'm not scared of him, and I die right now. I don't care. There's nothing he can do to scare me. And I'm not scared to tell people what I believe because I'm telling you, if you get that chip in your brain from Elon Musk, you've been fooled. Just be, the chip is the one that makes you uncomfortable. When you type, type in Neuralink and Greek Beta Dramatra, you get the numerical okay, value of 666. Can you type that in? Greek. Now, Gematra, apparently, I don't know a bunch of stuff. I'm not that well versed in my history, but Gematra is when they give words or letters a numerical value. When you type in Neuralink and Greek Beta Gematra, 666. That's why I believe it. Okay, so did you? Where did you read that? Did Remember, you read that online or? I typed it in myself. I went to the to the Greek Beta Gematra calculator and I typed in the word Neuralink and its numerical value in Greek Beta Gematra on this planet as we speak, which that means that the false prophet that comes along with the Antichrist is alive. So why do I think it's Elon Musk? Well, there's two pieces of evidence that are more significant. Uh, that are more significant than any other piece of evidence. One. It says in Revelation, the false prophet will deceive with fire from the sky. And so Elon Musk has this face, fake space program called SpaceX. And let me tell you, he ain't been past the firmament. No man has ever been past the firmament. He has not been in space. He has not put a rocket on Mars. He's not done anything he said he, he did. He's not a scientist. He's not a propulsion engineer. He don't make electric cars. He pays people to do it for him. He's, he's one of the greatest scammers that humanity's ever seen. But I think he's actually a step further than just a con artist. I think he's evil embodied. And I can say that with confidence because, like I said, one piece of scripture, the false prophet will deceive with fire from the sky. But here's another piece of evidence is Elon Musk is inventing chips that go in people's brains. And I'm telling you, that is the behavior to look for when you're talking about the Antichrist. There's going to be a mark in everybody's head, and there's going to be a mark in it or, or on their hand, okay? That's what they call the mark of the beast. And I'm telling you, Elon Musk, if he hasn't invented the mark of the beast yet, he is laying the groundwork for the Antichrist to take that mark of the beast and implement it on all humans. Because right now, Elon Musk has actually put a chip in somebody's brain and convinced them that they're healthier now. And I'm, I'm telling you, that's beyond a con artist. That is evil embodied to lie to somebody to the degree that you can tell them, hey, put this chip in your brain and I'll help you. And he's convincing, he's going to convince millions of people to put that chip in their brain. And I'm telling you right now, he sounds like the false prophet and the false prophet is going to present the Antichrist. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Yes, sir. So, it's Shalom, Shalom. Giving all praises and every glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash. And double honors to our apostles and our elders, out of the Church of Great Millstone, that taught us his true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and who are ruling well. Shalom to you, brothers, that are laboring to push this truth, being prophets and teachers, are helping to edify the elect of the nation of Israel. And Shalom, peace and love be unto the hopeful elect. All right, those of you that are laboring to push this truth, as well as those of you that are just believers. All right, all of you making up the household of faith. 
So I want to do this lesson, you know, speaking on uh, Bryce Mitchell, you know, a few comments that he made on Elon Musk. All right. He was on the I believe it's called the the 666 PBD podcast. All right. In which he um, had made a statement concerning Elon Musk being the false prophet in the book of Revelation and also made a statement of him being the Antichrist. You know, which there's not one particular Antichrist. Is he a Antichrist? Yes, indeed he is, because he's against Yahweh Shah. All right, and he's helping to develop a system. All right, that is an anti-Messiah system. All right, and what is that? That's the um, the brain C hip, all right, which is known as Neuralink. All right, it's that kind of technology which will be used to deceive the masses of people around the world. All right, through false miracles, and be used to X out all right, the Messiah. All right, and basically that technology will be used all right, uh, uh, to make it seem as if all right, the ones that are ruling and running through this system is your savior. All right, but the only salvation comes through our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. You know, so he's right about it being the MOTB, but he's wrong about, you know, um, uh, Elon Musk being a singular all right, anti-Messiah or Antichrist. All right, there are many Antichrists according to the scriptures. And also he uh, uh, breaks down a few scriptures wrong as he quotes them. Now, another thing I want to mention, you know, before I get into, you know, that part of the video. I want to mention, you know, these um, individuals that showed up to the RNC which is the Republican National Convention, all right? They're Trump supporters. And they showed up, you know, looking like they, they got, um, <laughs> looking like extras, all right, in the, in the, on, the, on the freezer force and Dragon Ball Z with scout meters on the side of their heads <laughs> because they um, put bandages, you know, on their right ear to basically um, show support for Trump you know, who supposedly, you know, had an attempt on his life, you know, which um, there's something, you know, fishy about that. And people are basically on to it. All right. But something is going on. And we understand that rather it be the red or the blue, the left or the right, the Democrats or the Republicans. All right. The left or the right horn. All right. They're all part of the beast system. OK. You got low level people that may not understand that, you know, uh, um, is basically one system and it's being ruled by the elites. So you got low level people. Yeah, they'll they'll enter into a civil war with each other, you know, and, and, and excuse my my um, my Portuguese, you know, but they'll fuck each other up, you know, and fighting each other. But however, not realizing that they're being played by the Richard Lee banking families. All right. We have uh, too many different things that pretty much hinted towards an event like this happening. And then it turns out it happens. All right. To me, you know, it, it smells. All right. It has a stench. So anyways, they, they pull up to the RNC showing their support for Trump and they got fucking patches on their right ear. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, one picture looks like Jeff Bezos with an American flag, you know, um, Band-Aid on his ear. Hillary Clinton got a piece of medical tape. All right. There's another individual, you know, with his ear covered. All right. And, and many others, you know, many others, you know, and I'll put the pictures there. But however, all of these people are delusional. They're delusional as fuck. OK. And this kind of behavior. All right. Let you know that people are going to take that micro C hip. All right. When it comes around, they're going to be the ones that is taking that brain C hip in their head, you know, or within their hands or any other part in their body for that matter, because it does not matter, you know, where that MOTB goes. If you take it, you took it. All right. Which you're going to catch the uh, judgment. All right. Everyone that takes it is going to catch judgment. Now, this is the book of Second Thessalonians 2, which I'm going to end up coming back to this anyways. But I want to um, start at uh, verse nine. It says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and, and signs and lying wonders 
All right, when you go into the word for lion wonders, it's pseudo pseudoscience. Okay, or pseudo salakia. <laughs> Not pseudoscience, but pseudos. All right, which the word pseudos uh simply means uh lying or to deceive. All right, in a broad sense, whatever is not what it seems to be, perverse, impious, deceitful precepts, uh, conscious and intentional falsehood. So who is that in a nutshell? That's not one particular person as certain scholars, as they would call themselves, try to make it seem as, oh, it's going to be one man that does that because they'll go to verse three and they'll say, well, that's the Antichrist. Notice I'm not talking about a singular person that will be identified as the Antichrist. In a nutshell, that's the so-called white man, all right? Esau, Edom, beginning with the rich elite banking families of this world. So he's the one who's coming after the working of Satan, and he's coming with the pseudoscience and his false miracles, all right, and with power and signs and lying wonders, all right, through his technology, and he's going to use that to basically deceive the masses of people. But however, the Heavenly Father is going to allow these people to be deceived. And with all deceivableness and, and unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie. And what is the definition of delusions? Because when you look at these people walking around with this this fucking um, patch on their ear, they're delusional. All right, and what is delusional? Characterized by or holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite in incontrovertible, all right, incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, typically as a, a symptom of mental condition. So all of these people are blinded. You know, they're, they're delusional. They're out of touch with, with reality. All right. Anyone within their right frame of thinking would know, all right, given all of the evidence that are out, that's out there, you know, that, that, that hey, people are being played by the rich elites. All right. Pulling at the strings of their hearts. All right. Uh, um, got them strung up like puppets, you know, control, controlling them, you know, through false flags, through psyops, you know, through, you know, uh, uh, plots all right to to bring certain things to pass and these people have such a great desire for america to be great again because they're totally invested in this place they're totally invested in this place all right unlike uh the elects of yahweh by shim shai because they believe look you just use this world as much as you need it all right, as the scripture say in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 31, and they that use the word world as not abusing it for the fashions of this world pass away. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the crises. We're looking for the epic time uh, that has been waiting for the fulfillment of prophecy. All right, we're not overusing this world. We're not abusing this world. All right, uh, which means to use uh, much or excessively or ill we want this bitch to go down that's the reason why we're praying for the downfall of babylon daily but these people they believe in the american dream so therefore they're willing to conform to this place they're willing to accept you know um the juice all right the um the chicken stew the chicken broth all right which is the the the, the sea juice They're willing to accept the MOTB. They're willing to accept anything that these motherfucking politicians and you know and people that are that are uh, um working as the mouthpiece for the elite banking families tell them to do. They're willing to accept anything that the news say. You know, they don't they don't they're not deep thinkers. Why? Because their their minds are darkened. They're in a state of delusion. And you you N-I-G-G-A's is up in the mix too. And it's going to be worse for you because judgment starts at the house of the Lord. Now, this is the book of um, 
Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed through the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. All right, uh, in the NLT, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let the Most High transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So all of these people think the same. They're a bunch of zombies. They're a bunch of uh, uh, cattle. They're a bunch of uh, 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 goats that are going to be herded up and destroyed. So they're delusional. Now, in regards to this whole Antichrist thing that Bryce Mitchell mentioned, which which you got a lot of um, Edomites in this country that are into the Bible. You know, and some of them know know the, the, the scriptures better than a lot of you Jakes. A lot of some of them know the scriptures better than you Jakes. Some of them know. That the MOTB is the mark of the beast. All right. The, uh, the RFID C hip and the brain C hip is the MOTB. All right. But, uh, but, but, but you niggas can't get it. I'll give it to, uh, Bryce Mitchell. I'll give him that one thing. He knows that something is wrong with this device. Nate, Nate of the IUIC can't get that. General y Yohanna, you know, of the ISUPK can't get that. All right, and many others can't get it and see it. But however, this this uh, device that Elon is coming up with and all of these other companies that's out there, Synchron, all right, because um, you got uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, get the Gates of Hell, which are teaming up with Synchron to develop, you know, another form of it, which uh, Synchron has been around uh uh, just as long as as uh, Elon been doing this thing, but how? However, I believe Synchron uh, got a um, FDA approval uh, first, and now they're trying to get approved for something else. If I'm not mistaken, so that technology is already out there. People have already been getting micro C hip. All right, they're they're. Hey, look, when you go into Switzerland, shit, the majority of people that are there speaking as a man has the MOTB which is the RFID C hip, but they'll get it in their, in their left hand. So the technology is out there. And what we're seeing through, you know, the, uh, the WEF, you know, the WHO and many other, you know, uh, groups that are out there, they're, uh, working for the elites to lay the foundation. All right. Uh, or, or to, to build upon the foundation that has already been laid for this kind of technology. So they call it the digital infrastructure. Everything is being set up. So it's not, you know, one particular man that's pushing this. All, right, all of these devils are anti-Messiah. You jakes that are out there, if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you're anti-Messiah. If you go against or push any information that's out there that's contrary to that in the scriptures, you're anti-Messiah. If you think most can be uh, uh, saved and that and that they're okay. You're anti-Messiah. If you uh, uh, you know, are teaching things that are contrary to the scriptures, if you disagree with the scriptures, well, guess what? Who's the one that gave us this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Who's the one is that's the conduit that this information flows through from the heavenly Father to us? All right, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior. Who's the one in the beginning that gave us the law, such as the commandments? The scriptures say that it was sent. And, and uh, ordained into into the, the hands of Moses by by an angel. So who is that angel? That angel is our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, by the dispensation of the angels. So it was Yahweh Shai that gave us the laws in the beginning, and He's going to judge people according to according to those. Now, um, going here. to the book of Wikipedia, and I'm going to read a little bit of what they say. It says, in Christian eschatology, which, um, eschatology, Salakia, let's get the definition of it real fast. Eschatology, the part of theology concerned with death, judgment, and the final destiny of the souls of humankind. Okay? That's what uh, the definition of eschatology is, according to Google. 
All right, the, the, the last, you know, the study of the last or the study of the end. So uh, going back here, in Christian eschatology, Antichrist refers to a kind of person prophesied by the Bible to oppose Yahweh Shai Mashiach. It says Jesus Christ here, but we understand that's not, that's not the name. And falsely substitute themselves as a savior in the Mashiach's place before the second coming. The term Antichrist, including one plural form, is found four times in the New Testament, solely in the first and second epistles of John. Antichrist is announced as one who denies the Father and the Son. So, according to Christian eschatology, the Antichrist will be one singular person. That's off. That's not correct. All right, let's read a little bit more. The similar term pseudo Christos or false Christ is also found in the gospel in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13. Yahweh Shah alerts his disciples not to be deceived by, by the false prophets. All right, with the S at the end, who will claim themselves to be the anointed, all right, performing great signs and wonders. There are images often associated with Antichrist uh, are the little horns of Daniel's uh, final vision, a man of sin, and Paul's epistles, our right, second uh, epistle to the Thessalonians, and the beast of the sea in the book of Revelation, which they're going off. All right, the little horn in Daniel's vision, when you go into Daniel the seventh chapter, is dealing with America. All right, and that can be proven. All right, the, the, the little horn was subdued three other horns. What were the three other horns? All right, it was when the pilgrims and the Puritans came over here and they conquered the French, all right, the Spanish and the British. The French, all right, through the Louisiana Purchase, all right, the Spanish through the Spanish-American Wars and the British through the uh, um excuse me the uh revolution re the, the revolutionary war so that's what that's talking about all right it's not talking about an anti messiah figure all right just as well as in the book of um daniel the eighth chapter all right the horn on the head of the he goat is dealing with alexander the greek the four other horns that came up after him is dealing with his four generals all right, later on, it speaks about Antiochus Epiphanes, which we're going to eventually get into that. Uh, the epistle went to Paul, when you go into 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter in the third verse, the man of sin is speaking about Esau Edom. That goes into perdition. Well, what country does Esau rule through and rule over all of the other countries? He ruled through America. So America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. Uh, let me go to these verses real quick. The book of 1 John 2 and 18, it says, Little children, it is the last time. All right? It is the last time. That, look, the last days didn't begin right now. The last days begin when our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, uh, died, you know, by being uh, crucified, all right, on the cross, and then rose back up. That's when the last days begin. That's when the, when the, what does that say? The final countdown. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The final countdown. That's when the countdown begins. So that marked the last days. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul said here within uh, the book of Hebrews 1 and 2, or 1 and 1. The Most High, who at sundry times, which which means many times, all right, sundry means many, and divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also all right, he made the worlds in Salakia, you know, it began with Yah when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, all right? Not when he died and rose again, but when he came on the scene, that's when the countdown began, all right? So I stand corrected on that. 
So going over back into the book of uh, 1 John 2 and 18, little children, it is the last times. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last times. So anybody that reads their Bible, especially a Christian, come on, y'all stay in the, in the New Testament. All right. Or maybe y'all need to go further than John 3, 16. All right. Maybe you ain't reading further into the Old Testament enough. You know, maybe you stop at Galatians, you know, 2 and 16 or 3 and 16. Maybe you need to read a little bit further. But anyways, in the book of 1 John 2 and 18, it says, even now are there many antichrists. So it's not just going to be one man. All right. Or one woman that is the the Antichrist and the representative of Satan on Earth. All right. <laughs> you know, who's who's Satan in the flesh? You Edomites are Satan in the flesh. But then you 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 uh, um, tribes that that are non-believers that come up against this truth. All right. That that. Oh, oh ain't no did no man come and die for our sin. Look, you anti messiahs as well. And you go against the, the things that are written in the scriptures that are really for your benefit. They have become a stumbling block unto you. First John 2 and 21. I have now written unto you, uh, ye know, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. And that no lies in the truth. Who is a liar but he that denied that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah? He is Antichrist and denied the Father and the Son. So if you don't accept Yahweh Shai and you don't accept Yahweh Shai's teachings, all right, you deny the Father too, even though you may say that you believe in the Father. You got a lot of scoffers amongst uh, the nation of Israel, you true Israelites, that come up and scoff on the comment boards, you scoff on the videos, every single video the brothers do, you come up against it. Nigga, you, you are Antichrist too. The book of 1 John 4 and 2, it says, Hereby know, Ye, the spirit of the Most High, e every spirit that confesses that Yahweh Shai is come in the flesh is of the Most High. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Shai is come in the flesh is not of the Most High. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. All right. Whereof ye have heard that it shall come. And even now it is already in the world. Because even back then you had niggas. Why do you think the book of Jew was reading? There's a lot of apostasy going on. You got a lot of niggas talking shit. The same way that you're doing it now, you got the same thing going on. All right, it's just a matter of time before the Lord do away with you treacherous and adulterous ass niggas and women that are out there. Are right, you deceitful? Are right, wicked, lying? Are right, uh, a scoffing ass niggas? The scriptures say, "Smite the scorner, and the simple shall beware." And we're witnessing a lot of judgment. Go out from the heavenly father upon you. All right. And your loose, slick ass lips. You gonna slip on all of that shit that's coming out of your mouth. The book of second John one and seven. It says for many deceivers are entered into the world. All right. Who confess not that Yahweh Shah is coming in the flesh. This is the seat, the deceiver and the antichrist. So what did that scripture say? That scripture said many. I already said many. It didn't say one. I didn't even say two. It said many. So real fast, let's grab the word for many. All right, for you simpletons out there, which the word there is um, uh, uh, poly. All right, you got something called uh, uh, polyamorous, where, where uh, uh, many dudes will be in a relationship with a woman, which is completely off. That's something that's wicked that this world teaches. You got polygamy. Polygamy is not off. That's when uh, multiple women are with one man. You got called something called polyglycerides, which which is many glycerides or many fats. All right. So the word uh, poly is G4183, which means many, much or large. OK. So many is not just speaking about one. It's speaking about multiple. So many deceivers are entering into the world. What is the word deceiver? The word there is plana, uh, planos, which is G4108. All right, leading it to error. All right, corrupter, deceiver, imposter. And what are you doing? You pushing, pushing, pushing apostasy. 
All right, this comes from um, the Great Apostasy. For Wikipedia, the Great Apostasy is a concept within Christianity to describe a perception of mainstream Christian churches have fallen away from the original faith by Yahweh Shai and promulgated through his 12 apostles. So, yeah, when it comes down to these Christian church churches, you don't follow uh, uh, what, the, what the 12 apostles were teaching. Are you far off from that? All right, uh, uh, the hell doctrine, that's far off from that. All right, uh, an anti-Messiah, that's far off from that. Moses can be saved and receive salvation and that they're loved by the Messiah. You fall, you fall off from what the, the apostles taught, man. All right, Babylon the Great being, uh, um, you know, uh, Rome. All right, many other different things that you are teaching. All right, everybody can be saved. The, 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 the Gentiles are the other nations. You're far off from what the apostles taught. A belief in, the, in a great apostasy has been characteristics of the restor, restoration, Salakia, the restorationist tradition of Christianity, which includes unrelated groups emerging after the second great awakening, such as uh, Christian Delph Delphins, Sweden Borgians, Latter day Saints, Jehovah's Witness, and Inglesia Ne, ne Cristo, all right, the Church of Christ. All right, um, the restorationist groups hold that traditional Christianity represented by Catholicism and Pro Protestantism and Orthodoxy has fallen, all right, in error, and thus the true faith need to be restored. Well, look, all of them groups. All right, even the ones that believe that Catholicism, you know, Protestantism and Orthodoxy, uh, uh, such as the Great Awakening, Christian De uh, Delphians, Swedenborgians, Latter-day Saints, Jehovah's Witness, Iglesias, Ne Christos, none of y'all had the truth. None of y'all got the truth. So the Great Awakening happened via the prophets all right, being risen back up into their state according to what it states Within the book of um, Revelation, the 11th chapter, man. The book of Revelation 11 and, and uh, 9. It says, And they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. Now, during this process, all of these, these different church groups were up and running. All right, they were up and running. And they all knew who we were and they didn't help to identify us that we are the true Israelites. They hid that from us. Just like um, um, Putin. Nigga, you ain't, you ain't uh, um, escaping. Just because you showed some images of Yahweh Shai as a dark-skinned man, nigga, you held that secret for a long time. All right, you, you bitch-ass nigga and you, you, um, you know, you individuals, you know, that are over in the Holy Land that are portraying yourself to be us. Are right, you helped to uphold their life for a long time, but now that you have eyes with them, now you want to let the cat out the bag. Shit, we glad you did it. Thank you, nigga. You know, because it helped us out. But ultimately, you helped to uphold that secret. You and the rest of these, these nations. So guess what? Y'all ain't escaping. There ain't no mercy going to be shown unto you. Don't think that you get any brownie points for that. You know, thank you. But guess what? You're still going into slavery. So anyways, um... All of these different groups, Christianity, Catholicism, all right, uh, um, Christian Orthodoxy, uh, Protestantism, uh, um, the Church of the Latter-day Saints, okay, um, uh, Christian Delphians, the Swedenborgians, all, right, all of you, you know, did not experience a great awakening. The great awakening happened when the, when the 144,000 uh, okay, or, or rather, let me say it this way. When the men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh beginning with the high priest Abba Bivens, began to wake up and preach this truth. All right? And, and this truth was taught and continued all the way up until the rest of the, the 144,000 received it. That's the great awakening, nigga. So reading on, it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, which were slaves too. 
because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and the great fear fell upon them that saw them. So why do you think, beginning with the elites on down, everybody's afraid the fact that you got men all over the earth that doesn't look like the small hatters that are, that are uh, uh, identifying with being the true Israelites. And everybody's attacking and coming up against us. So they let you know what? This is the great awakening. All right, as the scriptures say in the book of um, Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, verse 1, Awake, awake, put on strength, O, uh, o Zion, put on beauty, uh, beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, thy holy city. From henceforth there shall no more come into thee all right, the, uh, the uncircumcised or the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust and arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from thy from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So who 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 is captive? You know that needs to be loose. Who is in the dust that needs to shake themselves from the dust, which is a state of confusion? The true Israelites, because there was a great falling away. They forgot who they were, and they needed to be woke up. They were in a dead state. Them small heads, so we never forgot who we were. We always knew that we were the, you forgot according to prophecy, according to the will of the Heavenly Father. So therefore, we had to experience what was known as Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, the dry bones receiving life again. And throughout that process, guess what? Truth has been springing forth in the earth. All right, faith is beginning to flourish. This is the book of um, 2nd Ezra 6 and 28. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. So guess what? We are experiencing the great awakening. All right? Not you. All right? Christianity has been in the, in, in the, in the earth, or their form of Christianity has been in the earth for a while. So reading on, it says the term has... Uh, been used to describe and perceive fallen state of traditional Christianity, especially the Catholic Church, sometimes claiming that it changed the doctrine of the early church and allowed traditional Greco-Roman culture. You know, and that's true. All right, within, you know, uh, Christianity, there's a bunch of Greco-Roman culture and paganism. All right, uh, uh, the worshiping of, of, of the sun, you know, on Sunday, the worshiping of the sun during Christmas. All right, uh, um, uh, Halloween, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, um, the, the worshiping of the Queen of Heaven. All right, all of that is integrated plus more into the, 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 the Christian church or into modern day Christianity. An example, Greco Romans mysteries, deities, solar, um, um, monism, such as Mithras, uh, and so in Invictus. Let's look up our uh, soul and victus real fast. All right. The sun gods. All right. So the worshiping of the sun gods. That's what soul and victus is. Pagan fe festivals and Mithraic sun worship and idol worship into church on its own perception of authority because it made these changes using claims of tradition and not from scriptures. And that's the reason why the, the scriptures say, let me go here first. This is the book of Isaiah, the 29th chapter. And uh, verse 9, it says, Stay yourselves, wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What is a strong drink that they stagger with? They're staggering with the philosophies. Okay? They're staggering with these false teachings and false doctrines. It says, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. A, st a deep state of delusion. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which a man delivered to one that is that is learned, saying, read this. I pray thee, and he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So what was sealed? The scriptures were sealed up for a long time. All right, there wasn't no, no, no uh, uh, prophets teaching the scriptures, although the prophets were on the earth. All right, the book of Ezekiel, the third chapter, verse 26, the Heavenly Father can make the, 
the tongues of the prophets cleave to the roof of their mouths. All right, they had to be woken back up. And when they were woken back up, this book, which is the scriptures, the seals was broken on it, and it was revealed in the firmament. All right, it was taught through the internet. It says, and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I am not learned. So you, you, you different so-called scholars out there, you different theologian, theologian teachers, are you different uh, pastors and you preachers? All right, and even men that know that they're Israelites. All right, a lot of you don't don't know the truth. And the, and the book is sealed until you can't break down these scriptures to save your life and, or to save anybody else's life. And a lot of you come with different traditions that are traditions of men. You come with teachings and precepts of men. The book of Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their heart from, far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Another scripture real fast, the book of Matthew. This is 15 and 9. But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrine, the commandments of men. So this is this is a tradition. All right, uh, uh, the uh, one singular Antichrist being the representative of the of, of Satan on the earth. All right, and, and, and pushing, you know, the MOTB. There are many Antichrists. It's not just one. So um, every everybody can be saved. All nations can be saved. That's a tradition of men. That's not of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The hell doctrine. That's a tradition of men. That's not that's not of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's not what the scriptures say. Reading on it says the church and opinion of those adhering to this concept has fallen into apostasy. A major thread of this perception is the suggestion that to attract um, and convert people to Christianity, the church in Rome incorporated pagan beliefs and practices within Christian religion. Mostly Greco-Roman rituals, mysteries, and festivals. The term is derived from the second epistle uh, to the Thessalonians, in which the Apostle Paul informs Christians in Thessalonica that a great apostasy must occur before the return of Yahweh Shai. When the man of sin is, is revealed and the son of destruction. So who is the man of sin or the son of destruction? All right, that's speaking about Esau, Edom. Reading on uh, chapter 2, 1 through 12, the Catholic Church, Lutheran Church, Eastern and Oriental Orthodox churches have interpreted this scripture as referring to a future falling away during the reign of the Antichrist at the end of time. So once again, the, the, the whole thing that they push concerning the Antichrist is a tradition. All right, it's a tradition of man. It's not. It's not uh, of the scriptures, and the scriptures warn about that. The book of Colossians two and eight: Beware lest they spoil you through in, through philosophy and vain deceits after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh Shai. The book of First Peter one and eighteen: For as much as ye know. That ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your feigned conversations received by the tradition of your fathers. So you have something called traditions of men. All right, another thing that you have is um uh, the book of Titus 1 and 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn you from the truth. The book of 2 Peter 1 and 16, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known to you the power of uh, and coming of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, but were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. Second uh, Timothy four and four, it says, "And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn unto fables." So you got traditions of men and you got fables, and guess what? One singular antichrist is a fable. All right, just like the hell doctrine is a fable.
Just like the, um, you know, uh, many nations can be saved. That's a fable. All right. This thing is, is uh, simple. The book of 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear lest any by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai. So what what is the word simplicity means when you go into the Greek? The word there for sim simplicity in the Greek is G572, which is saplotes. And it says singleness, simplicity, sincerity, mental honesty. All right, the virtue of one who is free from pretense and hypocrisy. So all of those different um, breakdowns, they contradict the, what the scriptures say. So you know that it's hypocrisy. It's not, it's not the truth. Uh, this is from the Catholic Encyclopedia. Greek Antichristos, it says in composition, anti has different meanings. Uh, anti basilius denotes a king who, who um, fills an interregnum. Uh, anti uh, strategos, a proprietor, or uh, autopatos, a proconsul. In Homer, antithesis denotes. One resembling uh, antitheos, one resembling a god in power and beauty, while other works it stands for a hostile god. Following a mere analogy, one might interpret antichristos as denoting one who resembles uh, Yahweh Shai in appearance and power, but it is safer to define the word. According to its biblical uh, 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 ecclesiastical usage. So it gives those same scriptures in the book of John that we read earlier. But let's um, let's jump down real fast. Antichrist in ecclesiastical language. Busset believes that there were among the Jews a fully developed legend of Antichrist which was accepted and amplified by Christians. So that's that tradition that we were talking about, the fables, the Jewish fables. And that this legend uh, diverges from and contradicts in important points um, the conception found in the apocalypse. We do not believe that Busset has fully proved his opinion or his views as the Christian development and the concept of Anti Antichrist does not exceed the merits of an in ingenious theory. We need not here enter upon an investigation of Gonkel's work in which he traces back the idea of Antichrist to the, the, pr <laughs> the prim primeval dragon of the deep. This view deserves no more attention than the rest of the author's mythological fancies. What then is the true ecclesiastical concept of the Antichrist? Francisco uh, uh, Suarez maintains that it is a faith that the Antichrist is an individual person, a single enemy of the Messiah. This excludes the contention of those who explain Antichrist either as the whole collection of those who oppose the uh, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, or as the papacy, uh, the Waldensian or the Albigensian heretics, as well as Wyclef and Huss, called the Pope by the name of Antichrist, but the expression was only a metaphor in their case. It was only after the time of the Reformation that the name was applied to the Pope in its proper sense. It then passed practically into the creed of the Lutherans and has been seriously defended by them as late as 1861 and the Christ Fur uh, Luther uh theolo theology in Tulaki, I can't uh, pronounce it in that language the change from the true church into the, the region of Antichrist is said to have taken place between 19 February and 10th November AD 607 
The Pope Boniface III obtained from the Greek Emperor Newton the title head of all the churches for the Roman Church. An appeal made to the Apocalypse 13a, whatever that is. So as you can see, <laughs> all of this is a bunch of BS, man. All right, it's a bunch of BS. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because guess what? They're not they're not of of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. When you read further on in, in some of these different places where I read, they get to going into uh Daniel the eighth chapter, which I intend to read. This is uh, uh Daniel 8 and 21, and I'll read through 26. Which which those of us that are in the know, we know who this is talking about. This is talking about Antioch's epiphanies, which this this uh history. The, in Daniel 8 and 21 through 26, this took place back in 150, around 150 BC. This already took place. When you go into uh, Daniel the 11th chapter, Daniel the 11th chapter is that history, you know, uh, um, from from uh, about three 333 AD, somewhere around that time, going forward into the, the, the future before the Roman Empire would be set up. All right, this is the, the time of the, the Hellenization period. This has already took place. So Daniel the 8th chapter and Daniel the 11th chapter is already taking place. This ain't got nothing to do with the Antichrist. So this is Daniel 8 and 21. It says, and, and through the rough goat, Salakia, and through the through Salakia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. See? And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king's king. So when we go into the history, let's do this real fast. Which which Grisha is speaking about the um the Greeks. This is first Maccabees one and one. It says, and it happened after Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim had smitten Darius king of the Persians and the Medes that he reigned and instead the first over Greece. So this is speaking about uh, uh, Alexander. Okay. Now that being broken, whereas four stood um, up for it, four kingdoms shall stand out of the nation, but not in his power because when this generals, Alexander the, the creeps generals rose up, all right, he was he was broken. He he died, you know. As it states in the book of First Maccabees one and five, and after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him, all right, from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them, all right, while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned tw twelve years and died. And his servants bear rule one in his place. All right. Everyone in his place. And after his de death, they all put crowns upon themselves. And so did their sons after them many years. And evils was multiplying in the earth. So when they, they um, rose into power, it wasn't unified as uh, Alexander the, the Creep's vision was. All right. To have a one unified kingdom. It was split into four different kings. You had the king of the south. Uh, uh, the king of the north, the king of the east and the west. All right, you had uh, um, you had um, Ptolemy, you had Seleucus, you had Lysimachus, and you had Cassander. All right, those were his four, four generals. And they all, you know, um, uh, ruled in their own places. Reading on, it says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, it doesn't say in the latter time in the in the end of days you know later in the future in the eschatological sense you know that 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 of anti messiah is going to raise up no it says in the latter time of their kingdom which their kingdom was the Hell hellenic kingdom it was the greek empire it says when the transgressions are come to a full a king of a fierce countenance and of understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice and shall destroy the mighty in the holy places. And through his policy also shall he cause craft to prosper in his hand 
and shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand against the prince of princes and he shall be broken without hands because this is speaking of Antiochus Epiphanes. First Maccabees 1 and 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus Epiphanes, the son of Antiochus the king, and had been a who had been a hostage at, at uh, Rome, which he usurped his way to the throne, and reigned in a hundred and thirty and seven year in the kingdom of the Greeks. And in those days there went out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we have departed from them, we have had much sorrow. And Antiochus put hell on the people, especially after, you know, he came from Egypt and he was stopped by the Romans and he heard that uh, uh, Jason, you know, um, well, he didn't hear that Jason, he heard that the Israelites that were in the land of uh, Jerusalem, you know, in the land of Judah, were, were basically rebelling. But really they were fighting against you know, one of their own nation that was basically killing his own people. So going into first Maccabees five and one, because this is where, when, um, you know, um, the history of. In Salaki, let me see. No, it's, it's second Maccabees, Salaki, the fifth chapter. So this is when, when that history, you know, of, um, what happened in first Maccabees one and 40, you know, going all the way down began to take place. So second Maccabees five and one. And it says about that same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt. And then it happened that through all the city, throughout all the city, the space, almost for 40 days, they were seeing a, a, a horseman running in the air, clothing gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers and the troop and, and the horsemen in array encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields and a multitude of pikes and drawing of the swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments and harnesses of all sorts. Wherefore, every man prayed that the apparition might be turned to turn to good. Now, when there was going forth a false rumor, as, as though Antiochus had been dead, dead, Jason took the least, at least a thousand men and suddenly made an assault upon the city. And they that were upon the walls being put back and the city limb taken, Menelinus fled into the castle. So Jason was slaying his own citizen, his own brethren. All right. So when Antiochus caught wind of that, all right, all right, him already being angry at not being able to do what he wanted to do in Egypt because he was put back by the Romans, all right, he had in his mind to come in and destroy the Israelites, okay? So the book of, um, jumping down to verse 11, it says, and when uh, this was done, came the king's, uh, this was done, came to the king's ear, he thought that Judah had revolted, whereupon removing out of Egypt in a furious mind, he took the cities by force of arms and commanded his men of war not to spare such as they met and to slay such as went upon the houses. And there was killing of young and old and making away of men, women and children, slain of virgins and infants. And there was uh, destroyed within the space of three whole days, four score thousand, so 80,000. Whereon uh, 40,000 were slain in conflict and no fewer sold than slain. So they were selling our people in slavery, too. And this is how uh, our people got scattered into the different Greek provinces and eventually became Hellenized, you know, speaking Greek, you know, or either just speaking Greek and believing in their customs and the traditions of our forefathers. All right. Uh, uh, being uh, Grecian all right, or being uh, completely Hellenized. It says, yet was he not content with this, but presumed to go into the most holy temple of all the world, Menelaus, the traitor uh, to the laws and his own country being his guide. Uh, and taking the holy vessels with, with polluted hands and with profane hands, pulling down the things that were dedicated by other kings to the uh, augmentation of the glory and honor of the place 
he gave them away. And so haughty was Antiochus in mind that he considered not that Yahweh was angry for a while with the sins of them that dwelt in the city. And therefore, he was uh, not upon that place. So this is what is called in the scriptures, the abomination art of desolation. OK, and this is performed by the hands of Antiochus Epiph Epiphanes. So going back to the book of um, Daniel, the, the eighth chapter. Verse 24, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall uh, prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty people and the holy people. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and shall uh, magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of prince, princes but shall be broken without hands and the vision of the evening and of the morning all right, uh, which was told and is true wherefore shut up thou upon the vision and it shall be for many days you know so uh, during the time that Daniel received this vision let's go back to the scriptures this is um, Daniel 8 and 1 it says, in the third year of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and seized it. All right. And the Lord gave unto Je Jehoiakim Judah into the hands and the part, uh, parts of the vessels of the house of the Most High, uh, which he carried into the land of Shinar and the house of his power. So like Nebuchadnezzar carried them away. Let me read that one more time. Okay, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar carried them away. And the king spake unto, I'm sorry. I'm reading the, the wrong thing. I meant to hit Daniel 8 and 1. In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even Daniel. All right. After that which appeared unto me at the first. So Belshazzar is, is, um, if I'm not mistaken, he's a, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. I could be wrong. You know, I speak as a man. I have to go back and look it up. But however, Daniel was was in the end of what would be considered the Babylonian Empire. It was getting ready to be taken over. All right. And who's going to take it over? Uh, the, uh, the Persians and the Medes were going to take it over. So when Daniel received this vision, we would eventually go through the Persian and the Mede captivity. And then the Greeks will be set up. So, you know, what? I'm not even going to get uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter for the interest of time, because it's talking about the same thing. All right. Um, but in further depth, all right, it's speaking about, you know, the um, time period uh, um, from when the Persians and the Medes will be taken down all the way up until when the Greeks will be set up. And eventually Antiochus Epiphanes will come on the scene. So the part where they say talks about the Antichrist is the book of uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 36 through 37. That's what the Christians say that it's talking about the Antichrist. It ain't got nothing to do with the Antichrist, man. It's talking about Antiochus' epiphanies. Now, another scripture, the book of 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So who is this talking about? You know, um, over and over throughout the scriptures, it speaks about it speaks about the perdition. It calls Judas Iscariot the son of perdition, but these two scriptures are not affiliated. All right, Judas uh, um, was called the son of perdition because he was set up to fulfill a particular prophecy and betraying the Messiah. But this is speaking about something different. So this is speaking about in the future, you know, speaking about Esau, Edom, all right, being raised up, all right, which which for a long time, you know, the earth had forgot who the Edomites were, but because the prophets are back on the scene, they revealed and, and, and it's showing the world who the Edomites are. So now you even got Edomites that, yeah, I'm an Edomite. Hey, well, uh, what does my man say? God, am I an Edomite? Will I die because I'm white? Am I the heathen thou shalt smite? 
I thought I was safe inside the Christ. Even if I'm eat of my <laughs> So anyways, um Second Thessalonians two and three, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that falling away first was the Israelites forgetting that they were Israelites. All right, they had to be reawakened. So that is the great awakening. Not what these fucking Christians say, the second great awakening within the Christian church. You motherfuckers are still teaching and believing in the same bullshit, which is traditions of men. The majority of your teachings are traditions of men. It says, in that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So what does the word perdition mean? The word perdition in the scriptures is G684, which is uh, Apollia, uh, Apollia. And it says destroying utter destruction. So wh who's going into utter destruction? Who's going into utter destruction? Well, one, you Edomites are going to be completely destroyed off of the planet Earth. But this country that you're ruling through is going to be destroyed by great thermonuclear destruction, according to the scriptures. All right. According to the scriptures, through great thermonuclear destruction, all right, it's going to be completely destroyed. So um, real fast, let's go over here. Because when you go into the, the, the book of Revelation, they say the, the, uh, the, the dragon in the, in the great lake of fire, right? They think that the dragon is talking about the thermonuclear, uh, I'm sorry, not thermonuclear destruction. I got that on the brain. They think that the dragon is talking about um, the Antichrist, too, as if there's a there's a, um, a, uh, a man upon the earth that can shape ships into a dragon, you know, uh, uh, like he's um, like the uh, embodiment of, of Dracula or something. You know, who can shape shift into a bat and fly around. Man, you niggas are bugged out, man. So a bunch of fairy tales, a bunch of fables, and a bunch of tradition of men. So Revelation 12 and 3, and it says, And there appeared upon, uh, appeared another wonder in heaven, a uh, behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. So that right there should let you know something. All right? It says um, a great red dragon. That great red dragon represents the, uh, the Roman Empire. Matter of fact, you had the uh, the Romans. There was a certain band of soldiers. Okay, the, the Draco military standard. The Draco dragon or serpent, plural, Dracones, was a military standard of the Roman cavalry. Carried by the Draconarius, the Draco was the standard of the cohort as the eagle Aquila was that of the legion the draco many uh have been introduced in the roman army after the uh, dacian wars by by uh dacian and samaritan units in the second century according to the vegetius so anyways <laughs> it was a um the the draco you know a red dragon was used upon uh, Roman shields, all right? It was used upon Roman shields, all right? So a red dragon. So that red ja dragon in the book of Revelation, the, the, the 12th chapter, verse 3, represents the Romans. Uh, jumping down to verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast in, uh, in, out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So people read this, oh, this is the anti-Messiah. This is the anti-Christ. You know, but when you go into the, the, the old serpent, the old serpent was an actual man. But the spirit that was in the old serpent is, is the spirit that's working in these Edomites today. The rich elite banking families, all right, which are ruling over the earth. And where are they ruling over the earth? Through, through the West, through America. All right, through NATO and the EU. So going from here, which I'm grabbing these, these scriptures to build up to a point, because when you go to 
Revelation, the 17th chapter, I wanted to grab the scripture that, that mentions the old serpent, the devil, all right, and the ones that rich, mentions that the dragon have seven heads to bring it to this point right here. Because the dragon with the seven heads, all right, and the, and the ten horns is actually talking about a government system. All right, it's speaking about uh, um, the Roman Empire, which will fall and it will come back into power. That's the reason why in various other places in the, in the Revelation, it mentions that it had a wound unto death, but that it was revived, it was healed. So going here to the book of Revelation 12 and 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast, ca I'm sorry, not 12 and 9, 17 and 9. This is Revelation 17 and 9. It says, And, there's, and this is the mind of them that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short uh, space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. What did it say? Even in the eighth that come, he is even of the seventh and goeth into perdition. Now, one thing we know uh, from the scriptures, we know from the scriptures, it's so lucky I had um, lost my, my train of thought. But anyways, uh, yeah, I know what I was going to say. From the scriptures, we know that um, mountains represents, you know, represents uh, um, countries, you know. So it says that the seven hairs represent seven mountains. So how in the fuck are you talking about it's an antichrist? You know, how are you talking about it's an actual dragon when it says that this, this, the seven heads represent seven mountains? So when you go into Revelation verse 8, which we didn't read, that's speaking about the the uh, the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. And it's the same as Revelation 13 and 3. All right, uh, I was taken down, Revelation 21 through 3. It came back into power after 1,000 years, all right, uh, uh, during what is known as the Renaissance era. All right, um, uh, eventually the second leg of the Roman Empire will be established, which is America. All right, and America will go into perdition. All right, what is what is perdition? It's a destruction via the ICBM missiles. All right, the word uh, perdition once again, apuleo, which means destruction. So it mentioned uh, seven seven uh, mountains, right? Five are fallen, which was a Greek, Germanium major, Germanium minor. All right, the, uh, Spain. All right, um, and uh, the the French. All right, the Roman Empire. All right, and the other that was not yet come was speaking about Great Britain, and out of Great Britain came America. So that speaking that tells you the five that were fallen. The one is was the Roman Empire, okay, and the other that was not yet come is the is Great Britain, and the eighth, all right, came out of Europe, which which Europe is an Edomite nation. So uh, uh, America is the eighth. So America is the one that goes into perdition, lining up with Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. So so screw all of that shit concerning, you know, the Antichrist. You niggas is going off. All right. Um, Mr. Mitchell. All right. You going off, dog. All right. You going off, you know, calling uh, um, one particular individual singularly, you know, the Antichrist. When the scriptures say that there are many Antichrists, it's not just one. It's many. OK, and anyone that is against you, how about shy is an antichrist, man. All right. Point blank, period. Anyone that's against you, how about shy is an antichrist. The only thing that you get right is the mark of the beast, which is spoken about in Revelation 13, 16 through 18, that the neural link is the MOTB. All right. But there's other forms of the MOTB that's out there. All right, you got one that go in the hand or in different parts of the body, and then you got the the, uh, the head aspect of it. So Neuralink is just a form of that. You got other kind of chips that are out there that they'll put in the head. It's just a form of that technology. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. 
giving all praises, honor, and glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Until the next time, Shalom.